Dance Film Festival. Hating you right now. I moved to Britain, back to Britain, about 20 years ago because I thought this was a land of hope and glory. But having watched that, I'm thoroughly depressed and thinking about going back to Canada where these things would never happen. <laughs> uh, why are your films so, um, what's the word, ready? We were kind of interested in in the the mindset in in the um, in the people who do the exploiting and and. And I guess our point was how seductive that is to be drawn into that way of thinking. Um, the Angie character you're referring yes. to, yeah. Because I mean, that's that's the way. What we're told this is the way the world is now. You know, mm. you have to be entrepreneurs. Mm. You have to. Mm. Everything is a deal. Everything is business. Mm. It's the business ideology which, which has to rule. Um, I suspect we'll get some hostility from, from somewhere in Eastern Europe for the last scene because they'll say, you know, you're demeaning us by showing us putting on black masks and that. I suspect, I don't know. But it's not exactly Sasha Baron Cohen in terms of demeaning no, the no, East, no. No, <laughs> no, no. <laughs> She's a girl because we wanted, we wanted to take the audience on, a, on her journey and to start with somebody who was, you were very sympathetic to. And she's a single mum she is sexually harassed at work. Uh, she loses her job. She's obviously somebody who's got a sense of fun and a sense of energy. She's mischief. Um, but we thought if it was if it was just a guy doing the job, that it would you you wouldn't you wouldn't have started with that warmth towards her. I don't treat actors differently whether they're experienced or not experienced. And we start at the beginning and work through it. We, I don't give them the whole script at the beginning, they have it in chunks. Depends on the scene, you know, if they've got a lot to learn in it. Um, we do it, we do it, the script is very solid and worked on and is not negotiable, but we try to bring it to life by sort of slightly improvising around it. Well, first of all, we shoot in sequence, so that you, the film unfolds. And then I'd give the actors the, the script either two or three days in advance, maybe for the first little bit, maybe a week beforehand, so that everybody has a sense of confidence about it. And then, well, depending on the scene, you know, maybe the night before, maybe two or three nights, if there's, if there's a lot of things to say. I'm seeing there's an old fart now, so I'm not allowed <laughs> to shoot six days a week, which, which I recommend, actually. Five day weeks are very good. As a visual storyteller, and I must say, having seen the film for the first time here, I was I admired the, the visual elements um, that you, you use very, very powerfully. Um, but what what attracts you to a project? What what tweaks? What what's how does this how does the thing start? Um I I think it's um there is a built in contradiction, there's a built in unresolved issue which the narrative can then explain or explore and um, the conflict will is played out through the narrative. Also you have to audition them properly beforehand so that you really know they can do it. So when we do it, I'm, I'm not in dangerous territory, I mean I know they can do it because of the auditions we've done before which are largely improvised. And then when I kind of, you know, suggest to the actors how they might do it or talk it through with them and you know, say, what would you do? And hope that we've planned it in such a way that what they say I would do is actually what I've planned. I've never had the problem of um, someone wanting to intervene in the editing, apart from the very first film I did, which I didn't do a very good job on anyway. I mean, it wasn't, I wasn't very good on it. But I still, still the final cut was ours. Um, I guess the secret is I'm, we're cheap, you see. If you've got one big investor, then they can, they're in a stronger position to tell you what to do. If your budget is made up of five, six, seven different elements, then you can keep control. So I think there's a lot to be said for that. I suppose that as... I mean, when, when I first began in the business, it was uh, learn your lines and don't trip over the furniture, really. <laughs> when that's, that still holds good, you know. 
I mean, translating directly means know what you're doing and don't don't trip over the furniture, basically. Don't trip over the lights. I've um, supported Rain Dance, and Rain Dance has supported our films really since um, since it began, because to find films that are genuinely independent is quite rare. Um, certainly, films that are made, you know, with union agreements and at a full professional level, um, because most films, British films, you know, look towards America in some way or other. So I think I think Rain Dance has done a very useful job, a very good job of of promoting independent British cinema.